2017 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Like a new fling, we don't know where this is going or whether it'll all blow up when we start meeting the rest of Alfa Romeo's US bound family next year, but damn, things between us and the 2017 Giulia Quadrifoglio are hot right now. As in, cuffed to the bedposts hot. The sex appeal expected of an expensive, high-performance Italian car drifts from the GES every curve. The Quadrifoglio upgrade piles on the pheromones with the snarling front bumper, a massive diffuser straddled by Ferrari-like exhaust tips, and a, painted, carbon fiber hood and roof. The hardware also arouses. There is a torque vectoring differential, the twin turbocharged 2.9-liter V6 S Ferrari lineage, and the available Pirelli P0 Casa Symmetrico 2 tires and their ridiculously low 60 treadwear rating Promiscot shifting grip, and also incredibly brief intervals between replacements. All of this adds up to a sports sedan that can really rom. With 505 Cavalli at the ready, the GES horsepower advantage over the BMW M3, the Cadillac ATS-V, and the Mercedes AMG C63 doesn't go to waste, with 60 miles per hour coming up in just 3.6 seconds. The quarter mile flashes by in a blistering 11.9 seconds, both figures are class leading, and although we didn't have the space to verify it. Alpha claims the Giulia Quadrifoglio can achieve 191 miles per hour those sticky Pirelli tires, in combination with the standard iron brake rotors, carbon ceramic pieces are available for $5,500, help the Alpha stop from 70 miles per hour in a rib bruising 143 feet. And we recorded 1.00 grams of grip around our skid pad, a limit that's gently approachable although so high that few will ever experience it on public roads. Surely there's a but coming, right? You might think we've gone off the deep end, that the Alpha has tied one thigh high around our eyes. You're expecting us to come to our senses and realize that the Alpha's wiles are only a distraction from the sort of flaws common to semi-exotic Italian cars. We must be excusing curiosities such as an odd or non-functional infotainment system, questionable build quality, or worse because we're blinded by the sedan's sparkling performance and looks. We couldn't be more surprised to declare, for the most part, a great big nope to all that. Truly, the strangest aspect of the Giulia is its lack of a folding rear seat or a trunk pass-through. The rest of the car's execution is spot-on. The well-assembled interior resembles a Mazda 6's business-like environment, and the front seats are well-bolstered and graciously accept the human form. Headroom in front and back is generous thanks to the attractively domed roof, although real groom is tight. We are declaring the Giulia Quadrifoglio the new benchmark among sports sedans. Yes, you read that correctly. It drives outstandingly well, and at $73,595 to start, it is priced in the thick of the segment. Our nearly loaded test car's $79,195 as tested price even counts as tame compared with the prices one can pay for an M3 or a C63. Through reality colored glasses. If you were waiting for an asterisk, well, here it is, the 505 horsepower four-door, which is being joined by its less potent, 280 horsepower GUIA sibling in showrooms as you read this, is part of Alpha's first crack at the mainstream US car market since it fled from these shores 21 years ago. That breakup was definitely an it's you, not me episode, given Alpha's yellow snow reputation for reliability woes, and there is no getting around the fits and starts that have plagued Alpha's return to selling mainstream cars in the States. We encountered a single snafu with our early production Quadrifoglio, after remote starting the engine one cold morning, the check engine light flickered on and the driver information screen displayed the warning that the engine and the throttle control unit needed service. The car was completely drivable and exhibited no strange behavior other than restricting us to what felt like the advanced efficiency driving mode. We cleared the ECU codes, and the problem disappeared. Such hiccups are, unfortunately, not at all rare industry-wide in this electronic age. 
our long-term test of the current BMW M3 revealed numerous issues during its 40,000-mile stay, but we'll need longer exposure to the Alpha to determine whether its systems are any more or less robust than the competitions. Compared against the Alpha's considerable excellence, the issue failed to cool our feelings. Two thousand sixteen Cadillac ATS V sedan manual. Imagine ordering a ton of bricks. That's four hundred red paving bricks weighing five pounds apiece. You know, the bricks that made Indianapolis famous. They're yours. Now, do you want your ton of bricks dumped on you all at once? Or would you rather have one brick handed to you at a time? The manual transmission 2016 ATS V sedan is Cadillac's one brick at a time performance machine. Sometimes it's about feeling that kiln hard and claim your hand as you set the brick in place and build something magnificent with it. At other times, it's about bouncing that heft in your hand for a moment just before chucking the brick through a window and running like hell. With 464 horsepower from its 3.6 liter twin turbocharged V6. This is one of the world's great brick delivery systems. And it excels at running like hell. 3 Pedal Performance The stir-it-yourself transmission in this ATS V sedan is no mystery box. It's the Tremec TR6066 speed, an evolution of the T56 that has been used in various Camaros, Vipers, and Mustangs for almost a quarter century. All the demons were chased out of this gearbox decades ago, and it has been refined to the point that its shifts are intuitive. That is, if your intuition triggers some seriously beefy muscular reflexes. Cadillac has optimized the TR6060 by adding both active rev matching logic and no lift shifting. The rev matching feature blips the throttle when it anticipates a downshift to make the shift change smoother while the no-lift feature facilitates upshifts without making the driver lay off the go juice. Both technologies work well, keeping the engine in the medias part of its torque production even if the doofus driver couldn't stab it with a steak knife. A pair of switches, located aft of the shifter, control the three modes in which the ATS-V will operate, touring, sport, and track. One switch has an arrow pointing up, the other an arrow pointing down. Why one switch couldn't handle this task is a mystery, but whatever. In Turing mode, the engine idles almost silently and rises into a slight vibrating contralto as it runs through the gears. It's never loud, but there is an engaging resonant note to the exhaust. The ride is compliant without being mushy, and the steering is easygoing. In sport and track modes, the steering takes deliberate effort. The suspension stiffens significantly, and the exhaust is louder and more vivid but still falls well short of our RL expectations. Both the C63's bombastic V8 and the M3-M4's ripping in line 6 are far better. Sport mode is fun. Track mode makes the ATS-V feel as if it's in hot pursuit of a Trans Am title. The ATS-V's twin-turbo V6 is a sibling to the normally aspirated 3.6-liter V6 that General Motors uses in everything from the Chevrolet Colorado pickup to the livery spec Cadillac XTS that picked you up at the airport. But its closest relative is the twin-turbo 3.6 and the larger CTS of Sport sedan. In the CTS of Sport, it's rated at 420 horsepower. But in the ATS V it gets titanium connecting rods and new turbos, among other changes, and is tuned to deliver 464 horses. That's 39 horsepower more than a BMW M3's 3.0 liter twin turbo straight 6 but 39 horsepower behind the 4.0 liter twin turbo V8 in the Mercedes AMG C63S that's a nicely symmetrical splitting of differences. Cue the piper and pay the price. The EPA rates the ATS-V manual at 17 miles per gallon in the city, 1 mile per gallon better than the automatic, and 23 miles per gallon on the highway, 1 mile per gallon worse. 
driven aggressively to extract maximum yucks, the caddy slurped premium fuel at a rate of 15 miles per gallon in our care. What holds back the ATSV, no matter what the transmission, is its stinky rear seat, the often frustrating Q infotainment interface, and some lack of cohesion in design elements, for instance, switch gear and gauges that we associate with family sedans more than a luxury brand sports model. The ATS-V's performance puts it tantalizingly close to the best in class, but the manual transmission likely isn't enough to get it past both the M3 and the C63 SAMG in another comparison test. For those who'd prefer to shift for themselves, though, the only other choice is the BMW, Alfa Romeo's Giulia Quadrifoglio also will offer manual when it goes on sale. The brilliant Tricaro front seats are a deal at their $2,300 option price, but the $5,000 carbon fiber package might better be skipped, considering the vulnerability of the front splitter. Maybe after some acclimation it would become an ingrained habit to use the forward-facing camera to avoid scrapes, but the ATS-V would be just as entertaining without the worry. As it is, our Vector Blue Metallic Test Cars option load inflated the total chip from its $61,460 base price to $75,900. Cadillacs X have never been cheap, and neither is this one, although it should be noted that the German alternatives are easily optioned into the mid-dollar ADK range and even beyond $90,000 if you lack self-discipline. The ATS-V's seamless performance is in stark contrast to the seam-busting slamfus that is its radical big brother, the CTS-V, which starts at $84,990. With its 640-horsepower 6.2-liter supercharged V8, the CTS-V is the Cadillac for those who prefer getting their ton of bricks delivered all at once. The choice is yours.